Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Amol Ergutkar. I'm the CEO of Patient Prism. I'm here live at our Patient Prism studios at the Dykema's ninth annual DSO conference. I'm here with my friends, Tim Hill and Kim Schneider from Aspire Dental. Uh, they're an amazing uh, dental support organization based in Denver, Colorado at 20 offices. And um, they're a proud Patient Prism customer as well. Um, I'm excited to talk to them about how cool they are uh, in this space <laughs> because they really are. Um, they're kind of a unicorn in the space because they have thought about culture differently. They have thought about patient experience differently. Uh, they have thought about the journey of the patient a little differently. So Kim Schneider is their VP of marketing. Tell us why you guys are so cool. Well, <laughs> thank you for asking and thank you for having us. Of course. Um, I think what really differentiates Aspire, like you said, and just what are we looking to do is we're looking to turn the dental industry upside down. Okay. And we do that sort of through two ways. And it's this deep philosophy in everyone in our organization that if we create team culture and team happiness, they're going to pay that forward to our patients and right. they're going to create the best patient experience in dental. And so we really look at all of our strategic decisions. We look at the way that our company is set up and we look at the way that we support our team members in that lens. And we focus on making sure that our team feels fulfilled, happy, continuing education. They feel uh, like their ideas are supported within our organization, within their location. And therefore they take that impact. You come to work, you're happy every day, you are making your patient happy. And we really feel like those th two things go hand in hand. So that's our goal. It's such a simple thing to hear, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a hard thing to implement, right? Okay, but yeah, I want my teams to be happy. I want my people to be happy, but, but how do I make them happy? Um, how do I make them uphold the core values with which we stand for? And obviously must start with recruiting, right? You want to get the right people on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, what's that process like? How do you make sure that the people you hire are going to fit the organizational beliefs you have? Because these beliefs are, are although they should be ubiquitous, they're not. Right. Um, sometimes, you know, a lot of organizations are uh, financially driven a lot, and sometimes that causes friction. Um, and alignment is difficult between the clinical, the operations, and the financial stuff. Right. The alignment doesn't exist, so so everybody's in silos, and and people don't really align. But it must start with hiring the good good people, right? For sure. And, and, and you guys have hired some amazing people. Is What's that process like of recruiting? Yeah, so, you know, it's a great, a great question and something that probably that every organization struggles with. Um, but, you know, one of the things that aspire, great people attract great people. Right. And so, um, you know, that's one of the things we've been very fortunate. We've got people that really enjoy coming to work. And so they also, they want to work with others that have a very similar mindset. One of the philosophies that we um, have at Aspire is be you, align with us. And so, you know, we look for the, that diversity. We look for, um, you know, everyone from all different cultures and backgrounds and have different experiences that can come and just make us even a better organization and a better team with new ideas and, and different thought processes um, because that strengthens us as an organization. And um, that's one of our, um, one, that's one of the things that makes us special. So, um, you know, coupled with the culture that Kim talked about, um, it goes hand in hand. Uh, the, the team, happiness, joy, fulfillment, that's how we create greatness. Um, that's how we live joyfully and we lead bravely. Uh, it's a wonderful answer. How do you, um, one of the things uh, Simon Sinek talks about a lot is the circle of safety you create in an organization where everybody feels safe to come in and, and we don't think about my like, of course they feel safe, we're not gonna hit them. Uh, that's not the one, that, that's not safety. Sure. Safety to be themselves. Safety to, to, to go and tell, tell, tell their superiors that, hey, I don't think this is right. Um, what kind of flexibility, what kind of um, authority, not authority, I guess, permission do you give your employees uh, or your team members to, to come out and say, hey, I don't agree with this. Um, regardless of where they stand, whether it's the front or the back or, it could be the brand new employee that started a week ago. Sure. Do they have um, the, you know, do you get, and do you empower them to kind of bring that, that out? Sure, we absolutely want to empower every team member to, again, use their voice for good 
um, and when they see something or have an idea about something, uh, you know, obviously bring it to the surface. Um, if, if they're not in agreement with something, again, our, our goal is to create alignment. And so if you're not having that alignment with any individual, right. you want to understand where they're coming from and what their view and perspective is. And hopefully um, you're always able to find mutual ground and continue to move forward. So that way the organization can move forward in, in the ideals and, and culture that, that you're looking for. How do you get, Tim, you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, you've seen it all, right? The ups and the downs, sure. and you've seen all types of organizations. Um, at Aspire, how do you get doctors on board to kind of adhere to not only the best practices? I mean, again, we don't, we're not, DSOs are not in business telling doctors what to do, but, but how do you get them motivated to be their best selves? You know, it's, I think it's easy at Aspire, easier than I've had um, in some of my past organizations. And, and a, it largely has to do them all with our culture. Okay. Um, and the doctors that Aspire is attracting are probably doctors that may not work elsewhere. Okay. Because they don't, they're not finding that place that they would want to call home. Um, they're not finding that partner that truly has the same passion for um, an elevated patient experience or an elevated team member experience. When, when we talk about, you know, that elevation and that's our drive. I mean, every policy, every decision that we make, we look at it from, hey, how is this going to impact our team members? How is this going to impact our patients um, and our providers? And and that's that's at the core of, of our decision making process. So. Um, you know, when we look at provider happiness and provider, provider fulfillment, um, we're extremely proud that when we do a, a new patient survey um, for NPS score, right. and we also do it for our employees every single right. quarter. Right. And so we have an extremely high NPS for employee fulfillment, and that directly correlates with our high NPS score for patient. And when we're scoring an 83 NPS wow. score wow. for our patients, and then an 81 to, you know, 84 typically um, from quarter to quarter on our employees. Um, we're extremely proud of that, and that to us um, is the our, is our indication that we're doing something right. And when that number slips, then we're going to take a step back and go, hey, what what's happening? Why are our team members not as fulfilled, or why are our patients not as fulfilled? The that's truly special. I think I think the net promoter score is a great indicator, um, and and doing it both externally and internally is equally important because there's a correlation sure. there, right? And you can be 60 here and 80 inside. Right. It, it's got to be correlated, and those are. It's a great KPI that I think every organization should embrace sure. uh, with their customers and within their teams. Mm -hmm. um, um, two questions. Uh, one uh, first to Tim again. And it's something I'm very passionate about. Is that how do you get hygienists yeah. to to hold on? Uh, how do you get hygienists to not only you know produce uh, and and do the right by the patient, but how do you get them all inspired to do their best, but also get those get those patients that they have to go to the doctor's chair and, and accept the treatment that the patient deserves. Like, how do you, do you drive that through hygiene and how do you get hygiene, hygiene support? Because it's really needed in our industry. We need hygienists to support our organization. Without them, we can't really build a successful organizations. Tell us your thinking around hygiene. So, you know, hygiene is a, a pivotal piece of our practice. They're, they're a valuable provider and their clinical ability and skill set is so instrumental to our doctor's success as well. Right. And patients often love their hygienists more than their doctor. And right. they see their Absolutely. hygienists more sometimes than their doctor. And so, you know, we um, train uh, what we call our two to one transfer. Um, and, you know, it's, it's that piece where the hygienist and the doctor is working hand in hand um, and the communication of what the patient's needs are um, is communicated with the doctor in front of the patient. You know, we train our hygienists to, you know, always when they're communicating with the patient to sit down eye to eye, you know, don't stand above, don't hover. All those little things matter. 
Um, and even from a, a clinical perspective, you know, I, our hygiene team is outstanding. We have an amazing um, director of hyg um, hygiene, uh, Tina Brace, and, and she's been with Aspire for, for um, since since Aspire was formed. Yes. And um, it, you know, it's just really a dynamic group. Uh, a cool thing that we're doing, um, you know, Kim mentioned about turning the industry upside down and just doing things a little bit differently. You know, we know hygiene is an area, particularly in Colorado, that's, you know, um, challenging mm -hmm. when it comes to recruiting, but also just the support of, you know, getting hygienists to be supportive of each other in their right. profession. Right. One of the things we're doing at the end of the month, we're bringing Katrina Sanders, who's a, a oh, great fantastic. motivational She's speaker. Amazing. You know, we're bringing her to our DTC Denver practice. We've invited any hygienist in the community that wants to come for free to do wine and uh, uh, charcuterie cheese boards nice. with us, and they'll all get two free CEs. Um, but it's just a time to get them all together. And, and it's not just aspires hygienists, it's the whole industry. And so those are the types of things that we like to do. Just kind of thinking a little bit differently to, to get everyone involved. And uh, you know, we, we believe that impact will will continue to, to, to move our hygiene program forward, as well as just the hygiene profession. It's, it's great. I think uh, hygienists um, uh, sometimes in many organizations are not taught as providers. Um, they're taught as technicians who do profis and SRPs, right? Yeah, so much more uh, than that. Right? There's so much yeah. more there, right, uh, in, that, in that business, uh, in that, that field. Um, Kim, uh, the question I have for you is that dentistry over the, over the last 15 years has, has moved to this direct-to-consumer model and um, more dollars are being spent now to attract new patients in the mix. Um, what are you seeing in terms of patient acquisition um, in, in, at Aspire and, in, and how are you kind of looking at patient acquisition in 2022 and beyond um, to, to make sure the right patients are coming into the funnel and, and, and are being appointed and all that stuff. So tell us a little bit about that. It's a great question. Um, patient acquisition is the lifeline of all of our practices. It's, it's what our company is. And we have really gone in with a very, very strong branding strategy and a strong identity. Aspire is the place where excellence in dentistry meets inspired hospitality. That is what, wow. where we set the expectation for incoming new patients. We use only photography and images from our actual patients. Okay. We don't use any stock photographs. We use fun pictures of our team. We show who we are as humans, right. not just as dentists, as hygienists, as assistants, etc. And what we have found over the last three years in building just this dynamic brand is that new patients who see our advertising, marketing, hear our message, are just drawn to it. Because that type of patient sees what we're doing and they right. see the way we're celebrating our team members and our patients right. as our models. Right. And they want in. They know that that's a place where maybe they fit. So what we found is that they're just, they're drawn to our brand that's and cool. it really feeds the pipeline. Now, you know, brass tacks, my job is to make sure that new patients are coming in that's and we're right. seeing growth, right? That's right? So we've seen significant year over year growth for the past three years, double digit new patient acquisition numbers wow. um, consistently every year um, as our brand message grows, as our physical locations grow. And we're getting to the point now where when we open a new Aspire location in a new city, it's not you know starting from zero. It's, oh my gosh, an Aspire opened down the street from me. Wow. Amazing. Now I'm going to go into that it's practice. It's like a Starbucks, right? My God, my God, that Starbucks right in the corner. That is my goal, Amal. Right. You know, <laughs> that's where we're going to be 10 years from now is at Starbucks status. But yeah, it's it's an interesting model, and it's something that I expect to continue, um, and just building that brand dynamic and just a powerhouse place where people want to be. And again, you talk about turning an industry upside down. You know, it's changing the perception and the mind of the new patient. A dental experience doesn't have to be fearful. Yeah. You don't have to have anxiety about it. You don't have to worry about an individual who does not enjoy their job being the person that greets or doesn't greet you into the practice, right? You come into a smiling face. You come in to a welcoming environment where people want to take care of you, who they have learned about you before you even walk in the new door as a new patient. Absolutely. And if you are fearful, 
Everyone in one of our practices should know that, and they will treat you in a certain way to make sure that your experience is calm and inviting. And that right there is where we want to just change the stigma of the dentist being maybe not a fun place to be. It's like, let's start having fun at the dentist. Let's start feeling comfortable there. And as that message spreads, not just through our advertising, but through then word of mouth, it's just, again, we're changing the industry and it's doing nothing but accelerating our new patient growth. This is so fascinating to hear because um, this is the message that we need to get out to all of America. Right? 100%. Because that's why half the country is not even seeing a dentist, right? Um, I could talk to you all day long because this is exciting for me as I hear this. Um, um, I'm going to ask one more last question. I was only going to do two afterwards, but I have one last question. I think there's a lot of people here at Dykema, and there's a lot of de emerging DSOs, we call them, right? The groups that are going from 5, 10 to 20 to 40 to whatever the number is. Um, and they're all struggling with understanding and getting an idea of what's going on in their business. And so they're deploying lots of tools, business intelligence tools, to kind of elevate data and convert data or information into insight. And that insight allowing them to make decisions in real time or within a short period of time to kind of pivot or, or see problems as they arise. What kind of thinking do you guys have around business intelligence within the organization that allows you to get that intelligence surfaced so that you can take decisions before they're too late or, or improve something um, that kind of helps the business go forward? The best intelligence, Amal, I think that any business can have is the feedback and conversations with their team members. Okay. Um, every business can have every KPI report. Every business has their financial numbers and they all tell a story. Right. They all um, combined with each other um, can tell you if you're performing well in a particular area or not. But really the communication, the open lines of, of your team members and making sure that they have a voice and um, they're being heard and their suggestions are listened to and implemented. Sure. Um, that to me is, you know, if I could give any organization probably good advice, right. it's listen to your people. Um, that's what, that's why you hired them in the first place. And, you know, um, if, if you can't trust what they're saying to you, right, right. um, then you've got to kind of take a little bit of a step back. Um, right. but, uh, you know, that's, our people are our greatest asset in any organization. And so, uh, you have to, you have to tap into your resources. It is, it is, that's why I, I, before I started this interview, I, I knew I would, get really amazing answers, and I did. So thank you for those. Um, I'm, I'm uh, honored to uh, work with you guys, and as you continue your path to becoming um, one of the coolest DSOs on the planet, awesome. and I think you guys will because of your focus on people and, and their happiness and their fulfillment, because at the end of the day, why are we doing this for in the first place? Yeah. We're all trying to be happy about, and, and, and to provide that to your teams and the patients. Uh, that's how goodness gets recycled uh, into the society and we make everybody better. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I look forward to talking to you more in the future. Well, thank you. And thank you. We appreciate your partnership too. I mean, obviously Patient Prism plays a, a role for us as well. I mean, we, we utilize your platform to make sure, you know, all of the work that we do on the marketing side and, and the, the work that our teams do um, in bringing in word of mouth patients we're, we're doing everything we can to um, make sure that the conversations over the phone and all of those things are, are happening and that we're doing well um, from a training perspective. So um, it's a great partnership with, with Patient Prism as well. We appreciate uh, all that you do for our organization. You know, thank you, thank you for the kind words. Uh, Absolutely. We appreciate them very much. Um, have a great conference and I'm sure I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank I you. Appreciate it.